In this video, I will show you how you set up your RME audio interface with Apple's Logic Pro 10. Let's dive into it. First, install the driver for your RME interface. If you haven't done this already, you'll find the link to our downloads page and the appropriate driver in the video description. After the successful driver installation, open up Logic and go to Preferences. Under the Audio tab, you'll find all the relevant audio settings. First, select your RME audio interface, both as an input and output device. I.O. buffer size is important for controlling the time delay you hear when you record audio signals while simultaneously listening back to them on your headphones or speakers. This time delay is often referred to as latency. Latency can have a great effect on recordings. When the latency is too high, musicians often feel like they are dragging behind the beat. Reducing latency is therefore key to a natural and great recording. So the smaller the buffer size, the smaller the input lag while recording and playback. A round trip latency of under 10 milliseconds is usually barely noticeable for most musicians. Please note that a smaller buffer size will also increase your CPU load. Hence, it really is well advised to use a small buffer for recording, but increasing the buffer for mixing situations. Once you are satisfied with the settings, click on Apply Settings. All that is left to do now is to select one of the inputs of your RME audio interface in the channel strip settings by selecting the input button. Now you can start your recording. If you want to send audio channels to the outputs of your RME interface, simply select one of the outputs in the channel settings. These channels will then feed the respective software playback channel in Total Mix FX. If you are not familiar with this concept, watch our Total Mix FX beginner's guide. Thanks for watching.